On National Watermelon Day, no less, Trackhouse announces Ross Chastain will get their second car in 2022. How's it going y'all? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. It's a big, big day. It's the final edition of Show and Tell Tuesday, at least for the near future. At the end of this episode, we'll be opening up the mail y'all have sent in recently. It's also a big day because there's a lot of news. A major silly season domino fell today and the door number debate has taken a surprising turn. We'll get to all of that. It's also a big day because this episode is sponsored by my friends at Swan Security. Ah, makers of the Swan Enforcer Security System, complete with 4K motion detecting cameras that are equipped with little police flashing lights and sirens, the ultimate security system that will ward off any unwanted intruders, super convenient and it's really easy to check in on your camera's live feed anytime from anywhere using the Swan mobile app. Like check it out, here's my front patio right now, no funny business, I do need to bring my trash can in though, I'll do that after the show. Swan cameras also feature free cloud video storage and if you're not ready for something this big, this intense, they feature a smaller, portable, more convenient security camera, the Swan Extreme Security Camera. Camera. And fans of Out of the Groove can head to swan.com and get 15% off their order by using promo code GROOVE. G R O O V E. GROOVE for 15% off at swan.com. A great deal for fans of the show. Huge thank you to Swan Security for supporting Out of the Groove. Big breaking news this morning. We now know who Ross Chastain will drive for next season. Trackhouse announced today that Ross Chastain will drive the number one car in 2022. Oh, and it's a multi year deal for Chastain. That's right. Trackhouse, who you'll remember, is effectively buying out Chip Ganassi Racing will continue to run the number one car next season. The 42, it appears, will go by the wayside for the time being. But I love that Trackhouse is tweaking the font slightly, adding the little, little slash, the now familiar Trackhouse slash through the number. I like that. Gives it some character, some personality. Remember, Trackhouse was going to be without a charter for next season, so they went out and bought Chip Ganassi Racing, including their two charters. And so those are the two charters Trackhouse will use next year. One for Daniel Suarez in the 99, and another one now for or Ross Chastain in the one car. Now the team didn't say anything about who the crew chief may be or what sponsors they might have signed on. All we know is that Ross Chastain is sticking with Chevy. The most interesting team in NASCAR gets even more interestinger. That is not a word, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain can do. A couple journeyman drivers, I think we can say that, who've shown glimpses of brilliance this season, now teamed up with a brand new team, an exciting new team next year. Sky's the limit for Trackhouse, and with the next gen car, I feel like making any sort of predictions at this point is pointless. I'm a fan of the move. Ross Chastain has been good this year. I would say the first two or three months of the season were a bit disappointing. Got off to a very slow start. Didn't look any better than Matt Kenseth looked in that car last year. But since roughly Circuit of the Americas in mid-late May, so really over the last two months, Ross Chastain has, has picked things up immensely. He finished top five at Circuit of the Americas. He has a total of five top tens since that race. Throw a couple of top fives in there as well. Led some laps here and there. If not for that disastrous Pocono doubleheader where he finished outside the top 25 in both races, we might be talking about Ross Chastain pointing his way into the playoffs or at least keeping things competitive there. Still, Ross Chastain sits 18th in points at the moment, a clear step forward from where that 42 car was last year. So I'm excited to see what Chastain can do next season. To me, he has definitely earned a decent ride in the NASCAR Cup Series. He's an aggressive driver for sure, and at times he steps over the line a little bit and ruffles some feathers and makes mistakes. But when he's able to keep that aggressiveness out of the wall, like I said earlier, he's shown glimpses of greatness this season season. So I'm excited to see what he and Daniel Suarez and Justin Marks and Ty Norris and Pitbull and that whole team have in store for us next year. And the fact that they announced this on National Watermelon Day, that's no coincidence. They knew it would be great for marketing. They knew it would be fun. So hats off to Trackhouse for planning that announcement for today. Now, this does have some ripple effects across the rest of the NASCAR silly season landscape. What this tells me is that Kurt Busch to 2311, might be a done deal. Now that may not be news. I think The Athletic reported like a month or two ago that Kurt Busch was the leading candidate to land the future second 2311 ride. But when Trackhouse announced they were buying Chip Ganassi Racing and they threw out names like Kurt Busch, Ross Chastain, and others as drivers at the top of their list, 
Kurt Busch, you remember, even said that he'd gotten phone calls from Trackhouse about possibly driving for them. You know, that complicated things a little bit. I think for a moment there was the thought that, hey, maybe Kurt Busch will like what he sees more at Trackhouse than 2311. Maybe that will be an option for him. I gotta believe Kurt Busch was the first guy Trackhouse called. Like, no disrespect to Ross Chastain, but Kurt Busch, I mean, sure, he's a little older, but he's still a Cup Series champion. He's got a win this year. He is still currently a better driver, I think, than Ross Chastain is currently. Plus, he probably brings some Monster Energy funding, so you gotta imagine Trackhouse called Kurt Busch first. This looks like he said no, not necessarily because he wasn't interested, but probably because he's more interested by the Toyota 2311 deal. And then Trackhouse pivoted towards Ross Chastain. Hey, no shame in being someone's second choice, especially when the first choice is a Cup Series champion. But that's how I think this likely played out. So Kurt Busch more than likely has a deal done for next season or is very close to getting a deal done next season. We're just waiting on an official announcement. It seems very likely that Kurt Busch will join Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, and Michael Jordan at 2311 next year. Now we wait and see if and where they get a charter from. But that will be for a future video. Happy for Ross Chastain, competitive driver, deserving of a Cup Series seat. Excited to see what he can do next season. Now, before we open the mail, it's that time again. Fans in uproar about the possibility of NASCAR moving the location of the door number decal. But yesterday, this story took an unexpected twist. Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal reported, NASCAR's review with the teams of the potential number switch is in the final stages and barring a late change, it's likely that the decal will be moved specifically forward starting next season. Team Forward has taken control of the battle in the late stages. I didn't see this coming. Now this has been like a story, an ongoing story for like a year now. Ever since the All-Star Race last year when they slid the door numbers back, you'll recall, for, for the Bristol Race. It certainly appears as though the teams in NASCAR have made up their minds about moving the door numbers months ago and that all these studies and things were just for show, quite honestly. But what I did not expect is that they would reverse the direction they'd be sliding these numbers. All this time we've been talking about, oh, they're gonna slide them back closer to the back wheel. Well, that's what it's gonna be, back, back, back. So they did Bristol last year. All of a sudden, to see this change, they're sliding them forward? I must say, it's still very surprising. I'm a bigger fan of them sliding them forward than sliding them back. My problem with sliding them back is like, yes, that frees up the front part of the door for a logo, but then the way the paint scheme's gonna look, you're gonna have like a logo, the number, and then like another logo, you know, up on the side of the car, the side panel like they are now. I didn't really like how the door number was sort of splitting the logos in half. I didn't really like that. So by moving the, the door number forward, that now frees up all of this space over here for, you know, potentially one huge logo or two similar logos to be right next to each other. It keeps the number and the logos separate. I think moving the door number forward, if you're gonna move it at all, is the better option. A lot of fans have been sharing images of Eric Jones's Furniture Row Racing rookie car from 2017, where it appears as though the number was already being slid forward a little bit without fans noticing. But here's a good look at what this may look like next season. They might move the door number a little more forward than it is in this photo, but you can see how that Sport Clips logo is very, very big, and there's plenty of room for the Furniture Row and Five Hour Energy decals. A lot of these race teams have very talented designers. I'm sure they'll be able to come up with some some eye-catching, memorable paint schemes under this new format, but I just wanted to talk about it once again on the show because every couple of months we talk about the door numbers being slid around. My two parameters have not changed. All I ask is that you keep the door number very, very large. I think sliding them forward actually might help keep the numbers bigger. And my second parameter is don't get them up on the wheel well, don't get them up on the fender there so that the number is like severely warped. Those are my only two requests. If you can make that happen, I don't care where you put the numbers. I've seen some people speculating that they are moving the numbers forward now because with the next gen car, the rear quarter panel is a little smaller, maybe a little stubbier, I guess, than the current gen six cars are. So there's less space on the back of the car. So that's why they figured they'd move it forward and free up that whole half to do whatever they want with logos. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that really necessarily would have changed anything or makes any difference, but sounds like the numbers are being slid forward next year. Again, I'm okay with it as long as my two parameters are not shattered, are not broken. If any of these teams break those two rules, we're gonna have an issue. I still don't think a little extra space for a sponsor logo means that much in the grand scheme of things, but if the teams feel like it will help, if the sponsors are asking for it and are willing to pay for it, I say go for it. It's a new era, it's a complete reset in many ways, so why not slide the numbers over just a little bit? As long as they keep them big, large and in charge, I'm. I'm fine with it. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about NASCAR teams sliding the numbers forward. Would you have rather them slide them back? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now it's time, folks. This brings a tear to my eye. It's the final edition, for the time being at least, of Show and Tell Tuesday. 
Thank you again to everyone who has sent things to my P.O. Box. I've gotten a lot of great letters. Obviously, as you all have seen, some really, really cool packages. I greatly appreciate it. Perhaps sometime in the not so distant future, we'll bring the P.O. Box back. But I'm glad so many of y'all have had fun with it. I know I've had fun with it over these last few months. I did not expect this kind of support for this new segment. So I greatly appreciate it. Now let's get to this final batch of packages. We'll start off with this envelope from Jason in Indiana. Jason and Sam, actually, thank y'all for the letter. And they sent, what the heck is this? Oh my goodness, it's a one million dollar bill with uh, you know the greatest American of all time, Dale Earnhardt. Forget about the Benjamins, I want some Dale Earnhardt, some Intimidator money, I love this. I hope it shows up well on the camera. This is super duper random, the detail is amazing, I like the three right there. Thanks for sharing, Jason and Sam. Got a green envelope here, whoa, what is this? From Micah in North Carolina, Micah, sent a wood burning, what, what is this called? Yes, a wood burning of the 2007 Las Vegas NASCAR race. This looks incredible, look at the detail, look at the NASCAR logo, that looks awesome. How do you even make this? And now for reference, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Micah sent a photo of what he's attempting to replicate, that looks incredible. An awesome view of the front stretch at Las Vegas. Wow, we have some artists who watch this show. This is really, really cool. I don't know anything about wood burning, but this looks amazing. Well done. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm gonna have to find a spot for this in the studio. This looks really, really cool. I'm blown away, wow. Final show until Tuesday of the summer is off to a crazy start. Y'all are amazing. Thomas from Maryland, must be a big Roush Fenway fan, sent some hero cards. This is pretty cool. Ryan Newman, Kohler Generator's car, Chris Busher. Check this out, I like these kind of smaller ones, really cool. And I guess a future Roush Fenway driver, Brad Keselowski. This is actually a really cool, very simple, but great design. A lot of space for autographs right here. Appreciate you sharing these with us, Thomas. Another envelope here from Glenn in Virginia. Oh, oh, we got some more hero cards, some vintage hero cards. Whoa, Richard Petty, 1992 fan appreciation tour. One final time. That looks amazing. Again, a lot of space for a big Richard Petty autograph right there. Smart hero card design, I respect it. Oh my gosh, a lot of retro ones. This is Jimmy Spencer, it looks like. We've got Hale Yarbrough. These are amazing. Mark Martin, whoa! I think that's a printed signature, but still really, really cool. Mark Martin, man, that's nice. I swear, Mark Martin has looked the same age for like 30 years. <laughs> Alan Kulwicki right here. I'm trying to be very gentle with how I'm touching them. A couple of Waltrips, Michael Waltrip in the yellow, Daryl Waltrip here in the 17. These look awesome. I've never seen, actually, like, I don't know, pre-2005 hero cards in my lifetime. These are awesome. Whoa, Bill Elliott! Simple but amazing. I might have to get some of these framed. These look incredible. Whoa, it's another Mark Martin. I missed it. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. I love, this might be my favorite. I love that like 90s design. It's something about that just screams 90s. I also love the Vaveline car. Wow. Goodness, and they just keep going. Rusty Wallace right here. We've got Terry. Is it Terry? Terry Labonte. These are incredible. Thank you so much for sharing these. These come from Glenn. Enjoy these blasts from the past. Yes, thank you so much, Glenn. I absolutely did and will continue to. Wild stuff this week. This next package comes from Josh in New York. What is this? Whoa, whoa. Radical rides, what am I? What am I looking at right here? What is this? Matt Kenseth in like bobblehead form? Oh my, check out the rear tires on this thing. I love this so much. Oh, look on the back. Collect them all, Richard Petty, Kyle Petty, and more. <laughs> thank you for the letter, Josh, and thank you for introducing me to Radical rides. I've never heard of these. This thing looks amazing. I, I love how he's like rolling his eyes. Like even he's like, what am I, what am I doing on this thing? <laughs> that's amazing. Wow, what the heck? Do any of y'all collect radical rides out there? Like that's pretty nuts. Corey from North Carolina sent a very nice letter and also sent some pretty cool retro memorabilia. Check out some of these cards. Robert Yates, who's that? Neil Bonnet, Neil Bonnet. I'm looking in the small camera. It's hard for me to see who these people all are. More Neil Bonnet, very neat. Davey Allison, a lot of legends of the sport. Alan Kulwicki again. Is this like the same photo they used for that hero card I looked at? Well, very similar either way. No, this is really nice. Always love the Hooters car. Thank you for the trading cards. And he also sent, still in the packaging, a Matt Kenseth flame scheme. Pretty rare. I think the only time Kenseth had like real flames on his car was very early on in his career. Oh no, no, he actually drove that Kroger car in like 2011 for a race or two. That thing was wild. But this thing looks really, really cool. I actually don't have a Matt Kenseth flame die cast, I don't believe. Love the little bit of red mixed in with the, the classic yellow and black. I'm shocked this is still in the packaging. Thanks for sharing these. Really do appreciate it, Corey, thank you. We've still got a lot more to get to. I know it's the final show until Tuesday, but thank you all for sticking with me. This one comes from Texas, does not have a name on it. Oh. <laughs> 
Do you remember from, I think last week or maybe two weeks ago, one guy sent in a letter where he talked about a Bollywood movie from like 2007 that was basically Talladega Nights and this is it. Check it out, Tarurum Pum. This is the DVD version of it. Yeah, apparently it's about an Indian guy who I think, if I remember correctly, said they moved to New York to try to race in NASCAR. Looks like a good family film. I, I, I will have to check it out now. Now that I, is it, is it in here? Oh yes, it is. I am going to have to check it out now. This looks, this looks remarkable. I'm very excited to see how Bollywood portrayed NASCAR in the mid 2000s. This is exciting. I don't see a note in here. I don't know if this came from Amar. Amar was the guy who sent the letter last week or a couple weeks ago. So I'm not sure if this came from the same person, but whoever sent the DVD, I appreciate it. And we're still going. This comes from Jonathan in, oh gosh, the state was cut off by the label. Another Matt Kenseth diecast that I do not have, AmeriQuest. I at least don't have this AmeriQuest car. That's awesome, appreciate that. A little bit of blue in there as well. I kind of forgot about this paint scheme, but thank you for jogging my memory, Jonathan. All right, I've saved a couple of the big, big boxes is for last. This comes from George in New York. Oh my God, we got, is this another board game? Is this another NASCAR Monopoly that someone sent? NASCAR Champions, the thrilling game of fast cars and big money. <laughs> featuring Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. I love the box art, my goodness. For all race fans, ages eight and up. Wow, you gotta be pretty old to play this game. Must be, must be real thrilling. Okay, this thing is old, I have to be careful with it. Whoa, yeah, that's awesome. I used to have, I think it was called like NASCAR Race Day. It was like a little cardboard paper board game, kind of looked like this, and you had like real NASCAR looking cars. That was amazing. I, I took photos, I posted that before. Many of y'all maybe know what I'm talking about. Okay, here are the game pieces. You got Dale Earnhardt right here. This is uh, Bobby Labonte, little 18. Jeff Gordon, rainbow car, with oh, a sticker. The sticker decals are starting to come off, but okay, you got the game pieces. They got the actual logos. I think the whole game is here. I'm gonna have to play this. My dad loves board games as well, so I'm gonna have to break this out next time I see him. We're gonna have to go for a spin. I'll try and keep the box in one piece. These old vintage games, oh, almost dropped it, gotta be careful. I have to be careful with how I handle it. I really do like the box art though. Is it, is it on? I don't know if it's on all the way, but yeah, I really like the box art. That If I saw that on the shelf at Walmart, at Target, it'd be walking out with me. In your price, I'm getting it. Thanks for sharing, George. Okay, I appreciate y'all sticking with me. We've made it to the end of Show and Tell Tuesday officially. We have one final box and this thing is massive. I can't even like comfortably pull it up on screen. It says keep refrigerated, so I don't know what's in here. It's also got like air holes, so that's a little concerning. Let's see what's inside. This comes from Travis in West Virginia. Oh my gosh. Let's just start going through this. Oh my gosh, first thing I see is a giant Ward Burton Racing Champions die cast. 118th scale to match my other uh, couple of 118th scale cars I've got back there. Oh my gosh, you got a Daryl Waltrip with the silver. The Chrome 1997 edition, this is amazing. We've got, oh, we've got a hauler, a Buckshot Jones transporter, 164 scale, I believe, wow. Dude, what the heck, are we just cleaning out your inventory? We've got Morgan Shepard with the star. Morgan Shepard die cast in one hand. We've got, uh, I believe, here we go, Buckshot Jones. We've got the car to match the, the hauler. In the other hand, this is, this is not, and the box just keeps on going. Travis, Travis, another Daryl Waltrip car? What the heck? This one looks sexy. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh man, see, when I think number 17, I always think Matt Kenseth, but you know, Daryl Waltrip also made the number famous. <laughs> Give him some credit, I guess. Travis, what is this? We've got a 1997 Daytona 500 program. Is that what I'm looking at right here? Wow. You still got you know, Ernie Irvin, the stars of Daytona. You got little driver profiles and you know ads everywhere. Oh, check out this old Bush beer ad. That's pretty cool. The official beers of NASCAR. This thing is thick. I've noticed, it looks like everything he sent is from 1997. That's the year I was born. So maybe that's the point he's trying to make. Maybe that's the theme because this box just never ends. Now we've got some more stuff. Another micro car with uh, for Ward Burton right here. We've got that same Dura Walter car from earlier, but in 164 scale form. Terry Labunny the Blue, Tony the Tiger. Kellogg's car. Oh, even the Corn Flakes car. All right, this one I'm gonna get out of the box to show y'all. I have several Kellogg's die casts from Terry Labonte, from Kyle Busch, but I've never had the Corn Flakes car until now. I've never seen this thing in 124 scale form in person until now. Wow, this is amazing. 
I think it's just 164 skill cards left. Another Terry Labonte, this time smaller. And then we've got Ken Schrader. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. Look at that, Ken Schrader. Todd Bodine, check this out. Oh, another Chad Little, no more John Deere colors. You all know from last week, I really like the yellow and green look of this car. Is there a note in here or something? I gotta know, what, what got into Travis to send me this massive crate? The biggest mystery box of the year. Thank you so much though, Travis, for sharing all of this stuff. Wow. I love that it all had kind of a late 90s theme to it. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that the air holes on the box didn't mean that you had sent me a live animal or something. So anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of Out of the Groove and of Show and Tell Tuesday. I can't believe the kind of support this segment has gotten. I did not expect anything like this when I opened that P.O. box. Remember, I opened that P.O. box because I hadn't done one in a couple of years and a lot of people had sent me messages like, you should open one, you should open one. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll, you'll see what happens. I did not expect to get crates like that, but I'm glad so many of y'all enjoy the show and enjoy Show and Tell Tuesday and wanted to share, wanted to contribute to it. Really, really does mean a lot to me. Thank you all so, so much for watching, for supporting the show. That is gonna do it for this episode. Almost forgot that we talked about some big, big news at the beginning of this thing, but thank you all so much for watching. As always, a huge thank you as well to my amazing Patreon supporters. I couldn't do the show without you guys. I've got some traveling coming up very soon. Gonna be going to a lot of racetracks. That would not be possible without the support I get from y'all on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. Still more to come this week, including an appearance from a former NASCAR Cup Series champion later this week. Wink, wink, can't wait for that. Lots more to come here from Out of the Groove. Appreciate the support, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.